Robert Grosteste, Grosteste, Latin, Robertus Grosteste, c. 1175 to 9 October 1253, was an English statesman, scholastic philosopher, theologian, scientist, and bishop of Lincoln. He was born of humble parents at Stradbroke in Suffolk. Upon his death, he was almost universally revered as a saint in England, but attempts to procure a formal canonization failed. A. C. Crombie calls him the real founder of the tradition of scientific thought in medieval Oxford, and in some ways, of the modern English intellectual tradition. Scholarly career There is very little direct evidence about Grosteste's education. He may have received a liberal arts education at Hereford, in light of his connection with the Bishop of Hereford William de Vere in the 1190s and a recommendation from Gerald of Wales. It is fairly certain that Grosteste was a master by 1192, but whether that indicated that he had completed a course of studies is unclear. Grosteste acquired a position in the bishop household, but at the death of this patron he disappears from the historical record for several years. He appears again in the early 13th century as a judge delegate in Hereford, but there are no surviving details of where he resided or whether he had continued to study. By 1225, he had gained the benefice of Abbotsley in the Diocese of Lincoln, by which time he was a deacon. On that period in his life, scholarship is divided. Some historians argue that he began his teaching career in theology at Oxford in this year, whereas others have more recently argued that he used the income of his ecclesiastical post to support studies in theology at the University of Paris. However, there is clear evidence that by 1229-30 he was teaching at Oxford, but on the periphery as the lecture in theology to the Franciscans, who had established a convent in Oxford about 1224. He remained in this post until March 1235. Grosteste may also have been appointed Chancellor of the University of Oxford. However, the evidence for this comes from a late 13th century anecdote whose main claim is that Grosteste was in fact entitled the Master of Students Magister Scholarium. At the same time he began lecturing in theology at Oxford, Hugh of Wells, Bishop of Lincoln, appointed him as Archdeacon of Leicester, and he also gained a prebend that made him a canon in Lincoln Cathedral. However, after a severe illness in 1232, he resigned all his benefices Abbotsley and Leicester, but retained his prebend. His reasons were due to changing attitudes about the plurality of benefices holding more than one ecclesiastical position simultaneously, and after seeking advice from the papal court, he tendered his resignations. The angry response of his friends and colleagues to his resignations took him by surprise and he complained to his sister and to his closest friend, the Franciscan Adam Marsh, that his intentions had been completely misunderstood. As a master of the sacred page manuscripts of theology in Latin, Grosteste trained the Franciscans in the standard curriculum of university theology. The Franciscan Roger Bacon was his most famous disciple, and acquired an interest in the scientific method from him. Grosteste lectured on the Psalter, the Pauline Epistles, Genesis at least the creation account, and possibly on Isaiah, Daniel and Sirach. He also led disputations on such subjects as the theological nature of truth and the efficacy of the Mosaic Law. Grosteste also preached at the university and appears to have been called to preach within the diocese as well. He collected some of those sermons, along with some short notes and reflections, not long after he left Oxford, this is now known as his dicta. His theological writings reveal a continual interest in the natural world as a major resource for theological reflection and an ability to read Greek sources if he ever learned Hebrew, it would be not until he became Bishop of Lincoln. His theological index tabula distinctionum reveals the breadth of his learning and his desire to communicate it in a systematic manner. However, Grosteste's own style was far more unstructured than many of his scholastic contemporaries, and his writings reverberate with his own personal views and outlooks. Bishop of Lincoln In February 1235, Hugh of Wells died, and the canons of Lincoln Cathedral met to elect his successor. They soon were at a deadlock and could not reach a majority. Fearing that the election would be taken out of their hands, they settled on a compromise candidate, Grosteste. He was consecrated in June of that same year at Reading. 
He instituted an innovative program of visitation, a procedure normally reserved for the inspection of monasteries. Grosteste expanded it to include all the deaneries in each archdeaconry of his vast diocese. The scheme brought him into conflict with more than one privileged corporation, in particular with his own chapter, who vigorously disputed his claim to exercise the right of visitation over their community. The dispute raged hotly from 1239 to 1245, with the chapter launching an appeal to the papacy. In 1245, while attending the First Council of Lyons, the papal court ruled in favor of Grosteste. Dean William de Thornico is recorded as being suspended by Bishop Grosteste in 1239, together with precentor and subdean in relation to the aforementioned matter. In ecclesiastical politics the bishop belonged to the school of Becket. His zeal for reform led him to advance, on behalf of the courts, Christian pretensions which it was impossible that the secular power should admit. He twice incurred a rebuke from Henry III upon this subject although it was left for Edward I to settle the question of principle in favor of the state. The devotion of Grosteste to the hierarchical theories of his age is attested by his correspondence with his chapter and the king. Against the former he upheld the prerogative of the bishops, against the latter he asserted that it was impossible for a bishop to disregard the commands of the Holy See. Where the liberties of the national church came into conflict with the pretensions of Rome he stood by his own countrymen. Thus in 1238 he demanded that the king should release certain Oxford scholars who had assaulted the legate Otto Candidus. But at least up to the year 1247 he submitted patiently to papal encroachments, contenting himself with the protection by a special papal privilege of his own diocese from alien clerks. Of royal exactions he was more impatient, and, after the retirement of Archbishop St. Edmund, constituted himself the spokesman of the clerical estate in the Great Council. In 1244 he sat on a committee which was impaneled to consider a demand for a subsidy. The committee rejected the demand, and Grosteste foiled an attempt on the king's part to separate the clergy from the baronage. It is written, the bishop said, that united we stand and divided we fall. The last years of Grosteste's life and episcopacy were embroiled in a conflict with the new Archbishop of Canterbury, Boniface of Savoy. In 1250, he travelled to the papal court, where one of the cardinals read his complaints at an audience with Innocent IV. He claimed not only that Boniface was threatening the health of the Church but also that the Pope was just as guilty for not reigning him in and that that was symptomatic of the current malaise of the entire Church. Most observers noted the personal animus between the Bishop of Lincoln and the Pope, but it did not stop the Pope from agreeing to most of Grosteste's demands about the way the English Church ought to function. Grosteste continued to keep a watchful eye on ecclesiastical events. In 1251 he protested against a papal mandate enjoining the English clergy to pay Henry III one-tenth of their revenues for a crusade, and called attention to the fact that, under the system of provisions, a sum of 70,000 marks was annually drawn from England by the alien nominees of Rome. In 1253, upon being commanded to provide in his own diocese for a papal nephew, he wrote a letter of expostulation and refusal, not to the Pope himself but to the commissioner, Master Innocent, through whom he received the mandate. The text of the Remonstrance, as given in the Burton Annals and in Matthew Paris, has possibly been altered by a forger who had less respect than Grosteste for the papacy. The language is more violent than that which the bishop elsewhere employs. But the general argument, that the papacy may command obedience only so far as its commands are consonant with the teaching of Christ and the Apostles, is only what should be expected from an ecclesiastical reformer of Grosteste's time. There is much more reason for suspecting the letter addressed to the nobles of England, the citizens of London, and the community of the whole realm." In which Grosteste is represented as denouncing in unmeasured terms papal finance in all its branches. But even in this case allowance must be made for the difference between modern and medieval standards of decorum. Grosteste numbered among his most intimate friends the Franciscan teacher, Adam Marsh. Through Adam he came into close relations with Simone de Montfort. From the Franciscan letters it appears that the Earl had studied a political tract by Grosteste on the difference between a monarchy and a tyranny and that he embraced with enthusiasm the bishop's projects of ecclesiastical reform. Their alliance began as early as 1239, when Grosteste exerted himself to bring about a reconciliation between the king and the Earl. 
but there is no reason to suppose that the political ideas of Montfort had matured before the death of Grosteste, nor did Grosteste busy himself over much with secular politics, except insofar as they touched the interest of the Church. Grosteste realized that the misrule of Henry III and his unprincipled compact with the papacy largely accounted for the degeneracy of the English hierarchy and the laxity of ecclesiastical discipline. But he can hardly be termed a constitutionalist. Death and burial Grosteste died on 9 October 1253 he was aged between 70 and 80. He is buried in a tomb within his memorial chapel within Lincoln Cathedral. Its dedicatory plaque reads as follows in this place lies the body of Robert Grosseteste -E -E, who was born at Stradbroke in Suffolk, studied in the University of Paris, and in 1224 became Chancellor of Oxford University where he befriended and taught the newly founded Orders of Friars. In 1229 he became Archdeacon of Leicester and a canon of this cathedral, reigning as Bishop of Lincoln from 17th. June 1235 until his death. He was a man of learning and an inspiration to scholars a wise administrator while a true shepherd of his flock, ever concerned to lead them to Christ in whose service he strove to temper justice with mercy, hating the sin while loving the sinner, not sparing the rod though cherishing the weak, he died on 8. October 1253. Reputation and legacy Grosteste was already an elderly man, with a firmly established reputation, when he became a bishop. As an ecclesiastical statesman, he showed the same fiery zeal and versatility of which he had given proof in his academic career, but the general tendency of modern writers has been to exaggerate his political and ecclesiastical services, and to neglect his performance as a scientist and scholar. The opinion of his own age, as expressed by Matthew Paris and Roger Bacon, was very different. His contemporaries, while admitting the excellence of his intentions as a statesman, lay stress upon his defects of temper and discretion. But they see in him the pioneer of a literary and scientific movement, not merely a great ecclesiastic who patronized learning in his leisure hours, but the first mathematician and physicist of his age. He anticipated, in these fields of thought, some of the striking ideas to which Roger Bacon subsequently gave a wider currency. Bishop Grosteste University, a stone's throw away from Lincoln Cathedral, is named after Robert Grosteste. The university provides initial teacher training and academic degrees at all levels. In 2003, it hosted an international conference on Grosteste in honor of the 750th anniversary of his death. Works <laughs> <laughs> Grosteste wrote a number of early works in Latin and French while he was a clerk see biography above, including one called Chasto d. Amour, an allegorical poem on the creation of the world and Christian redemption, as well as several other poems and texts on household management and courtly etiquette. He also wrote a number of theological works including the influential Hexameron in the 1230s. He was also a highly regarded author of manuals on pastoral care and produced treatises that dealt with a variety of penitential contexts including monasteries, the parish and a bishop's household. However, Grosteste is best known as an original thinker for his work concerning what would today be called science or the scientific method. From about 1220 to 1235 he wrote a host of scientific treatises including De Sphera. An introductory text on astronomy. De Luce. On the Metaphysics of Light. Which is the most original work of cosmogony in the Latin West. De Accessu et Recessu Maris. On tides and tidal movements. Although some scholars dispute his authorship. De Linnaeus, Angulus et Figurus. Mathematical Reasoning in the Natural Sciences. De Iride. On the Rainbow, in 1242, having been introduced to the Greek work by John of Basingstoke, Grosteste had the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs brought from Greece and translated it with help of a clerk of St. Albans. For the strengthening of the Christian sick faith and the confusion of the Jews who were said to have deliberately hidden the book away. On account of the manifest prophecies of Christ contained therein. 
He also wrote a number of commentaries on Aristotle, including the first in the West of Posterior Analytics, and one on Aristotle's physics, which has survived as a loose collection of notes or glosses on the text. Moreover, he did a lot of very interesting work on Pseudo Dionysus the Areopagite's celestial hierarchy. He translated both the text and the Scholia from Greek into Latin and wrote a commentary. Science It has been argued that Grosteste played a key role in the development of the scientific method. Grosteste did introduce to the Latin West the notion of controlled experiment and related it to demonstrative science, as one among many ways of arriving at such knowledge. Although Grosteste did not always follow his own advice during his investigations, his work is seen as instrumental in the history of the development of the Western scientific tradition. Grosteste was the first of the scholastics to fully understand Aristotle's vision of the dual path of scientific reasoning, generalizing from particular observations into a universal law, and then back again from universal laws to prediction of particulars. Grosteste called this, "...resolution and composition." So, for example, looking at the particulars of the moon, it is possible to arrive at universal laws about nature. Conversely once these universal laws are understood, it is possible to make predictions and observations about other objects besides the moon. Grosteste said further that both paths should be verified through experimentation to verify the principles involved. These ideas established a tradition that carried forward to Padua and Galileo Galilei in the 17th century. As important as resolution and composition would become to the future of Western scientific tradition, more important to his own time was his idea of the subordination of the sciences. For example, when looking at geometry and optics, optics is subordinate to geometry because optics depends on geometry, and so optics was a prime example of a subalternate science. Thus Grosteste concluded, following much of what Boethius had argued, that mathematics was the highest of all sciences, and the basis for all others, since every natural science ultimately depended on mathematics. He supported this conclusion by looking at light, which he believed to be the first form of all things, the source of all generation and motion approximately what is now known as biology and physics. Hence, since light could be reduced to lines and points, and thus fully explained in the realm of mathematics, mathematics was the highest order of the sciences. Grosteste's work in optics was also relevant and would be continued by Roger Bacon, who often mentioned his indebtedness to him although there is no proof that the two ever met. In De Iride Grosteste writes, this part of optics, when well understood, shows us how we may make things a very long distance off appear as if placed very close, and large near things appear very small, and how we may make small things placed at a distance appear any size we want, so that it may be possible for us to read the smallest letters at incredible distances, or to count sand, or seed, or any sort of minute objects. Editions of the original Latin text may be found in, Die Philosophischen Werk de Robert Grosteste, Bischofs von Lincoln, Munster I. W. Aschendorf, 1912, p. 75. Grossesteste is now believed to have had a very modern understanding of color, and supposed errors in his account have been found to be based on corrupt late copies of his essay on the nature of color, written in about 1225. De Luce. In 2014, Grossesteste. S. 1225 Treatise de Luce on Light was translated from Latin and interpreted by an interdisciplinary project led by Durham University, that included Latinists, philologists, medieval historians, physicists and cosmologists. De Luce explores the nature of matter and the cosmos. Four centuries before Isaac Newton proposed gravity and seven centuries before the Big Bang theory, Grosteste described the birth of the universe in an explosion and the crystallization of matter to form stars and planets in a set of nested spheres around Earth. De Luce is the first attempt to describe the heavens and Earth using a single set of physical laws. The Ordered Universe collaboration of scientists and historians at Durham University studying medieval science regard him as a key figure in showing that pre-Renaissance science was far more advanced than previously thought. Topic veneration Topic Upon his death, he was almost universally revered as a saint in England, with miracles reported at his shrine and pilgrims to it granted an indulgence by the Bishop of Lincoln. 
Attempts by the Lincoln bishops, the University of Oxford, and Edward I to secure a formal canonization, however, failed. In most of the modern Anglican Communion, Grosteste is considered beatified and commemorated on 9 October. However, the Episcopal Church USA commemorates him with St. Hugh of Lincoln on 17 November. Topic editions Topic Versio Calestis Hierarchiae Pseudo Dionysi Areopagitae cum Scholis ex Greco Sumptus nec non commentaries Notulisc Iosdom Lincolniensis, ed. D. A. Lowell Corpus Christianorum. Continuatio Medievalis 268, Turnhout, Breppels Publishers, 2015 ISBN 978-2-503-55593-5 Opera I Expositio in Epistolum Sancti Pauli ad Galatas. Glossarum in Sancti Pauli Epistolas Fragmenta. Tabula, ed. J. McAvoy, L. Rosario, R. C. Dales, P. W. Roseman Corpus Christianorum. Continuatio Medievalis 130, Turnhout, Breppels Publishers, 1995 ISBN 978 2 503 2 The Greek Commentaries of the Nicomachean Ethics of Aristotle in the Latin Translation of Robert Grosteste, ed. H. Merkin, Corpus Latinum Commentariorum in Aristotelum Graecorum v. Leiden, Brill, 1973 1991. On Light, ed. C. Riedel, Milwaukee, Y., 1942. Topic works in translation Topic Mystical theology The Glosses by Thomas Gallus and the Commentary of Robert Grosteste on Domestica Theologia, ed. J. McAvoy, Paris, Peters, 2003. On the Six Days of Creation, T.R. C. F. J. Martin, Oxford, 1996 topic See also topic Brazen Head Greyfriars, Oxford History of Science in the Middle Ages History of the Scientific Method List of Bishops of Lincoln and Precursor Offices List of Roman Catholic Scientist Clerics Oxford Franciscan School topic Notes topic topic References topic topic Citations topic topic Further reading topic Bauer L. Ed. Die Philosophischen Werk des Robert Grosteste, Bischofs von Lincoln in Biemkers Beitrag zur Geschichte der Philosophie des Mittelalters Series, Vol. 9 Munster I. W. Aschendorf, 1912. Crombie, A. C. Robert Grosteste and the Origins of Experimental Science. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1971, OCLC 401196. ISBN 0-19-824189-5 Fried, E. B., Greenway, D. E., Porter, S., Roy, I. 1996. Handbook of British Chronology 3rd Revised Ed. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-56350-X. Ginther, James R. Master of the Sacred Page, A Study of the Theology of Robert Grosteste C.A., 1229-30-1235. Aldershot, Ashgate Publishers, 2004. ISBN 0 7546 1649 5. Goering, J. W. and Mackey, E. A. E. D. S., Editing Robert Grosteste, Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 2003. ISBN 978 080 208 841 3. Leward, Henry Richards. 1890. Grosteste, Robert. In Stephen, Leslie, Lee, Sydney. Dictionary of National Biography, 23. London, Smith, Elder & Co. McAvoy, James. The Philosophy of Robert Grosteste. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1992. ISBN 0-19-824645-5. McAvoy, James. Robert Grosteste. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2000. Southern, R. W. Robert Grosteste, The Growth of an English Mind in Medieval Europe. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1986. ISBN 0-19-820310-1 Oxford University Press, USA, 2 edition the 1st of February 1992 PBK Topic External links Topic The Electronic Grosteste International Robert Grosteste Society Ordered Universe Project Robert Grosteste, The Catholic Encyclopedia, Vol. 7, New York, Robert Appleton Co., 1910. Robert Grosteste. In Encyclopædia Britannica Online
Claire Riedel's 1942 translation of On Light Medieval Bishops theory resembles modern concept of multiple universes. The 24th of April 2014 by Tom McLeish, Giles Gasper and Hannah Smithson. The Conversation. McLeish, Tom, Gasper, Giles, Smithson, Hannah. The 7th of June 2015. Our latest scientific research partner was a medieval bishop. The Conversation US. Retrieved the 14th of June 2015. Brooks, Michael. The 27th of November 2014. The medieval bishop who helped to unweave the rainbow. The Guardian. October. The Anglican Service Book. Rosemont. Good Shepherd Press. Reprinted 2007. 1991. P. 24. British History Online. Archdeacons of Leicester accessed on the 28th of October 2007. British History Online. Bishops of Lincoln accessed on the 28th of October 2007.